This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing nutritious and delicious. There are numerous flavors to choose from. There is strawberry sea moss, peanut hard-on, beaten thing, pineapple sea moss, mango sea moss, pineapple ginger, ginger root, cucumber ginger, and so much more. Call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Call now and you won't be disappointed. If you think the juices were good, then try Starboy's Jello, full of flavor and sumptuous. Again, call Starboy's at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sport City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sport City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sport City right now. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? I hope you all are doing well. I'm Simon Preston, and welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. This is the platform where we come together to discuss everything in relation to Jamaican football. This is your hub for everything Jamaican football related. How is everybody doing? So, great to have everybody with the chat. Dr. Hero says, Blitz, Simon. Uh, and look at the Jamaican flags within the chat. Before we continue on, what I want to do is play an insert for you from the, the chairman of the technical committee at the Jamaica Football Federation, Mr. Rudolf Speed, speaking about the expansion of the tournaments. I know we're going to get into the Reggae Boys and Nations League and Copa America, but what I really want to do is to be able to digest this latest development from FIFA because this is a game changer and one that is going to be so beneficial towards Jamaica. So I'm going to go and play the insert and then afterwards we'll review it. And then from there we go right into this video in particular. All right, guys. So have a listen as we talk about the increase in teams for the respective under 17 World Cups. The women's under 17 World Cup from 16 to 24 teams. And for the men's World Cup, it goes from 24 to 48 teams. So have a listen here. Um, being played every year. Right. So the under 17 World Cup playing every year is actually um, a genius move, mainly because usually a lot of countries tend to just use the 17-year-olds, and then the 16-year-olds, you know, would have been left behind. So what really happened is that they would be born in what you call the wrong year because at the next World Cup, they'll be too old to play. So I think this is a genius move that gives every player 
under a certain age, an opportunity to play in a World Cup, which is really um, the dream of every football player. The movement, the increase in move in the amount of teams in, in all the competition again is significant because um, a lot of us developing nation really can't get to catch up because of the infrequence because of the limited number of teams that actually play in each competition. So you don't get a chance to to, to identify what the gaps are and you're able to, to train towards um, playing in this tournament because the gap is just too great. But with more teams being added, there is a reduction in the gap in terms of who can qualify and gives Jamaica a better chance to qualify. Because once you're there, it is easier for you to maintain that that type of discipline um, and the commitment and try to secure more funding to go there early. So it is really a good thing to go up to 48. I mean, in our region, there are some powerhouse teams. Um, this will enable additional teams, I will forget about six spots, um, to be able to go to the World Cup because that will really be great for Jamaica as the team, as the country continues to try and develop um, in other places. So there you go. There you go, folks, in relation to the situation of the youth tournaments. How do you all feel about that? I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about that. But game changer, huge for Jamaica to be able to partner and to have a situation where we're having an under-17 World Cup expand from 24 to 48 teams and having a scenario of a tournament going from 16 to 24 teams as well. These are massive in relation to football. So how does the Reggae Boys' performance in the Nations League affect Copa America? That is what we're going to go into right now, folks. So please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Comment as well where you guys are watching this video from. All right? Comment where you're watching this video from right now, okay? Because that helps big time in the grand scheme of things, okay? We would really appreciate that, okay? So that would be key. So let's go right into this, shall we? All right, good. So let's go into, do, 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 do. Yes, this situation right here in relation to the state of why. And I'm gonna show you right now through an illustration. And this right here, as you can see, is the state of Dallas. And Dallas is where, well, state of Texas. And Texas is where Jamaica is going to have a lot of games and i'm going to explain why okay good so as you can see jamaica is going to play against the united states march 21 and the third place playoff or final which will be on the 24th in the copa america itself jamaica's first game is against mexico and where will that game be in particular well that game will be in houston houston right here okay this will be jamaica's first game in copa america Second game in Vegas, and the third game lies in a town called Austin. Yep, that's right, Austin, Texas. I'll be playing in this stadium that you're going to see right now. So that will be Jamaica's third game in the tournament. That's the stadium. That is the stadium, folks. You guys see? So, Nations League, two games. The opening game in Copa America in Houston, that's three. And there's also another game that will be in Austin, Texas, which should be four. So, four of Jamaica's next five games, rather, four of Jamaica's next seven games will be in Texas. Four of Jamaica's next seven games will be, that's right, in Texas. Okay?
Yep. Come on, guys. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'm waiting on you guys. I'm waiting on you guys. Okay. I'm waiting on you guys. AT and T Stadium, which is in Arlington, Texas. There we go. So that is the stadium. All right. Come on, guys. So this is the AT&T Stadium where we'll play our game. As you can see, it's enclosed, you know, in the Nations League final. So this, look at it, face your eyes, can be the place where Jamaica lifts its first continental title. Let me see this comment right here. When are we going to tackle infrastructure development in Jamaica? All right, Milo Uncut. No problem. Happy to answer that question. Happy, happy to answer that question. In relation to the National Stadium, work will begin at the National Stadium in 2025 in terms of the actual renovation. So 2025, it's going to start there. But you are absolutely right that all facilities in Jamaica, multi-purpose and otherwise, do need room for improvement. I think everybody can agree that there's area for room for improvement in our facilities, 100%, to bring it to a standard that is not only modern, but you know, you have everything at your fingertips so that you are able to best pre prepare, perform, and everything like that. Milo Uncut. Shamar, we don't discuss speculation, all right? We discuss facts on this platform. It's as simple as that. So, as you can see right here, you see this is the stadium that we're referring to, right? The exact stadium where Jamaica will be in. Drive on this merry road to come around, parking area, and entrance somewhere around here. This is the place where Jamaica can lift their first title. Hey, Lee, how are you doing? All is well? Hope you're doing good. You're just checking in. Well, make sure you hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And you missed the first 15, 16 minutes of this video. So you know what that means. You have to pay the penalty and hit use a super chat feature. But yes, if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, four of Jamaica's next seven competitive games will be played in the state of Texas. You have two in the Nations League, and then, of course, we have the World Cup qualifiers. And then after that, two of our group stage games are in the state of Texas, one in Houston and one in Austin. And after that, if you look at the Copa America schedule for 2024, you'll see that regardless of whether Jamaica finishes first or second in Group B, that Jamaica will be playing our 
quarterfinal game in Texas. That's right. If we top the group, we're going to be playing in this stadium that you're seeing on your screen. If we're a runner-up, and that means we're going to be in Houston. And factor this in, folks. If Jamaica is a runner-up, it means Jamaica-Argentina in the quarterfinals. However, if Jamaica tops the group, it means Jamaica against the runner-up of Group A, which could be Peru, Chile, and in the semifinals, it would mean Jamaica versus Argentina. And interesting. So that is the situation. I know you guys are probably just tuning in, but please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Looking forward to hearing what you guys are saying. Come on, guys. How is everybody doing? All is well? Tell us, how are you doing? Make sure you guys make your comments in below so that we can be able to progress from there. What level can the lowest coaching license coach? Well, you have level, you have D, you have the D license here in Jamaica, and you have courses for the D license, you have the C license, the B license, etc., etc. So you understand exactly what, what is going on. Wicked man, Chris. This platform right here is not about speculation. This is about accuracy, reliability, credibility, and positivity. And facts. So we don't speak things that we don't know. We speak facts right here. Where's my mana, Simon? Wagwan. <laughs> Wagwan. Uh, Chris, you're a Tivoli Gardens fan, don't it? <laughs> uh, boy, I tell you. Shamar, did you listen to what Coach Valgrimson said yesterday? You know what I should do? I should play it so that you guys listen, because a lot of persons have not watched the press conference, and persons need to watch the press conference. So what I'm going to do is play the press conference, because persons, I don't think persons, because they didn't watch it, so a lot of assumption is being made. Yes, I want to start my coaching here, but I'm in my early 20s. Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that at all. One garden, no other garden is... <laughs> what about Arnett Gardens? Play it? All right, no problem, I'll play it. Simon, do you believe that employing a high press strategy will be successful against the US? Absolutely, I do think that style... Absolutely, I do think that is something that can be 
effective 100 percent for sure place in Dallas. So just want to get from Coach Halgrimson firstly, some opening remarks in relation to the Trinidad camp, and then we lead into the Nations League itself. Coach? Yeah, thank you for a, for a, a lovely prayer as well. Um, yeah, so um, as we have stated before, um, January and February was, uh, was our time to focus on the domestic players. Uh, we traveled the parishes, uh, met the people in charge of football development, did some local camps, played uh, games against JPL teams. Uh, so really we, we put full focus on the domestic players. That kind of um, project finished with the two matches in Trinidad uh, and it gave us a chance to, to see new players up close uh, it gave them a chance to show us um, how good they were uh, and what they can offer for the national team. Well, it was it was two really good months for me, especially uh, as I learned a lot about the culture, the football culture. Uh, speaking to the <coughs> excuse me, speaking to the the people in charge of the development. Um, so some players from this project took their chance, and I would say. From these kind of from these kind of games and camps, uh, even though it only give us one player for the first team, it's worth it. Um, and in this squad, current squad, we have three players uh, from this camp in Trinidad. Um, and I would say some some players really caught our attention, uh, and all of them are are, are future future reggae boys potentials so even though these two months are finished um, we will still have an eye on on domestic football and uh, our plan is that Meron is is gonna be our eyes and ears even though we will be watching as well but he will be ahead of uh, watching the JPL and and the players here um, and maybe I'll, I'll give give the floor to you Meron if you want to talk something more about this Trinidad camp and and how it helped us Yes, good morning. Um, I think the guys acquitted themselves well. Um, this champ for me was to see how people could transition from, you know, our, our local Premier League, you know, into international football. Um, you know, the focus, you know, the focus on the meetings, the focus on the trainings. I think the guys really did well. Um, you know, some of them really knocked on the door really hard. You know, also maybe it's a little bit difficult for us to, to select um, the squad to, to go into the National League. So I think the guys did well and it's just for them to just continue to, to, to build on their craft and hopefully in the future we might have even more than, than the number we have now in the squad. Yes, thank you very much coaches, really appreciate it on recapping the Trinidad camp. Certainly a lot of positives to take from that experience, being able to give 14 debutants and being able to keep a clean sheet in Trinidad and Tobago for the first time since 1998 as well. So certainly some great strides were achieved in that camp and also prior, as the coaches made mention, the domestic camps that took place on that weekly basis. Now we're going to talk and switch uh, attention now into the Nations League. Coach, just want to get firstly from you the importance, the excitement leading into these upcoming games for Jamaica in Dallas. Yeah, first of all, it's uh, an absolute privilege and exciting for us to be in the top four CONCACAF tournament. So it's the first time for Jamaica and it's really good for the development of our squad leading to the World Cup in 226 to be playing finals is is uh, is always important for every player to to play matches like these it is of course going to be in us against us uh in front of their fans uh and they they have the the capability of playing at home all the way to at least 2027 because all finals will be played in US until 2027. So they have the, the advantage of be, being always playing in front of their supporters. So I hope the Jamaicans living in, in the diaspora in, in, in US will come and support us, all, all the people that can please come and, and, and show support to, to, the, to the players. But what it means is, is of course, number one, it gives us, um, it gives us a chance to, 
to win a continental trophy, that would be the first one for Jamaica. Um, yeah, and doing good in this tournament would give us a lot of FIFA points that will affect the, the, the rankings, etc. So it's a big chance for us if we do good. And like I said, if we have two good performances, um, then we, 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 we have won our first major trophy uh, for Jamaica. So a lot of possibilities in, in this camp. But it's a really good preparation, both for the Copa America uh, in the summer, the, the World Cup matches in June, and then, of course, in preparing the, the, the squad for World Cup qualification. Yes, and just to remind that to the media as well, for next week, Thursday, Dallas and Jamaica are back on the same time zone now. So kickoff will be 6 p.m. Jamaica time. So it's the same time in Dallas as well. 6 p.m. kickoff for Jamaica against the United States. And the final and third place playoff will be on the 24th, which would be the Sunday as well. So those are some of the logistical things that you can, we all can make note about for those games. Now we can, yes, go ahead, coach. No, it's, it's just, it's a strange camp though for us. Uh, it's a short one. Um, so the, the, the match is played on Thursday, if I remember right. Uh, most of our players though are playing Saturday. There is, uh, I think, four, four players, five players playing Sunday. So most of them will be in the US on Monday, but we probably will not be able to train on Monday uh, so we have only Tuesday and Wednesday to prepare. So it's a very short preparation for uh, an important for important match. Uh, and I'm really happy that the players uh, are set to come as early as possible so we can at least have some players on training on Monday. Um, so, yeah, that, that, is, that is one thing. Prior to go into the, the squad, we have also uh, added into the staff um, for this camp Dr. Jason Scott Hamilton, uh, a sports psychologist that will be supporting more, maybe observing this camp, but we intend to have him as a staff member uh, in the Copa America. So we give him this chance to get to know us, to get to know the players and for the players to get to know him. So uh, he will just be there to, to assess things for, for sure, helping us coaches and for the players that, that want. Also, we will be involving in the staff Freddie Butler and Bibi Gardner. Freddie is the under 17 coach uh, for Jamaica and Bibi has been supporting the, the programs, the national team programs, uh, both from England and, and here in Jamaica. So it is really important, especially for me as a, as a foreigner to have former reggae boys coming in and giving their expertise and their experience. And it helps the players as well a lot to, to have the possibility to interact with, with them. So we're trying to do what we can to improve our setup uh, in the national team. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Now we can go straight into the upcoming assignments. But before that, uh, Coach Maron Gordon will touch a little bit on our first opponents in the semifinal, which would be the United States. Um, US, um, what can we say? Um, big rivals for us. Um, we have 11 players coming over from the Gold Cup squad into this squad. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a team with a lot of high profile players in high profile clubs. Um, you know, but um, I think tactically we have. We have been doing good against them, yeah, especially recently. You know, it's just to fix a few final details, and we should get a positive result against them. Against them, um, with a little bit, a little bit more killer instinct, I think we could have, you know, beat them in the Gold Cup. Um, but you know, su such is the game. But we are planning. I know they are planning. Um, but we are, we're trying to get this, you know, um, get this one right this time because, you know, we really want to win this this tournament. You know, and it'll be very good for the country to win something like this and a good boost going into the Copa America, a good boost going into the, 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 the World Cup qualifying. All right, thanks very much, Coach Gordon. Now, Coach Algrimson, we can go right into in relation to the squad and some key notes on, on certain players. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to talk about the squad. It's already in the social media, so it interesting makes you wonder who you can trust and who not. Uh, so it leaks easily out here in Jamaica. So we need to be more careful, especially going to important to important matches like these that we don't give any advantage to the opponents. So I'm going to start with uh, some some negatives. Uh, some players uh, 
are missing this camp. Uh, for, for example, Ethan Pinnock. Uh, Pinnock had a bad ankle injury uh, and is still a few weeks from returning. He has absolutely assured me that he will be fresh and ready for the World Cup preparations and the Copa America matches. Um, sadly, Amari Bell got injured last week and he did a hamstring surgery three days ago uh, and he will be out the minimum, I think he said, 11 weeks. So even unlikely to be fit for our World Cup matches in June and the Copa America as well. It's possible, but I would say it's, it's unlikely. Um, third and fourth player missing is Shaman Nicholson and Demari Gray. They, they are both suspended for the game against US. So, but we still add them in the squad because uh, they will be eligible to play the second match we play. So both of them, Ushamar got uh, yellow cards in both games against Canada and that is why he is suspended uh, against US and Demari got a red card uh, in the second match. So he's automatically suspended against US. But like I say, they are both uh, available for our second match in the tournament. And then Leon Bailey and Trevante Stewart both. Well, yes, Chris, he would be back and forth, back and forth. Not selected for this count because of disciplinary reasons. Uh, maybe just to, to finish on that one, because I know that will be, if, I, if we don't explain, there will be a lot of questions, just to avoid a lot of questions. Um, we basically have a lot of agreements between the staff and the coaches and the players, but we on, have only one rule, don't leave the hotel after 10 p.m. Um, and these players did, uh, didn't even sleep at the hotel, missed the bus next morning. Um, um, clever use in spaces, hard pressing guy, and is a, is a born goal scorer. So uh, a, a player that we really think is a future potential for the reggae boys. If we go to the next one. Kaim Dixon, um, you know, after the school board tournament, you know, I had a meeting with coach and I told him about this youngster. Uh, we took a look, a look at him during the local camps, you know, impressed us then. Very hardworking kid, you know, school goals at will. Um, we took him to Trinidad. We won the game 1-0. He was a goal scorer. Um, did really well, especially in the first game. If a kid with a, with a bright future and somebody that we think, you know, is, is good to be around us, especially be around professionals, you know, in a professional environment to see what the, the next level is like. And I think this would just, just be a joy for this kid. Yeah, has a, has a lot still to learn, like like most young players, but has got goals written all over him, I feel. And then the third one is Shafan Davis, is, is, is for the first time selected for the squad, the goalkeeper. Mount Pleasant. Uh, surely can be one of our future reggae boys goalkeepers um trained with us when we had the camp here against canada and has impressed our goalkeeper coach and he wants to at least continue to monitor him and help him help him grow uh i think the the squad is online so uh, with so many players out gives of course chance for others to step up shine uh, and we we after some absent times we we are recalling Ronaldo Sipas he's been playing really well in in Turkey for for his club Jamal Lowe uh, also played really well uh, for Swansea Corey Burke returning from injury is is fit and ready and Richard King has not been with us for for some time so we recall him again the rest of the squad as you can see online um are the players that have been with us in in the Nations League games leading up to this one uh, since September. It's really nice to have a, a player like Mikel Antonio who got injured uh, against Canada, now back into to action. Uh, and the same I can say with uh, Casey Palmer who, who missed out, I think, the Canada matches. Uh, so he's back and playing really well for Coventry at the moment. So we have players doing really well at their clubs and we hope they can transfer that into the, to the national team. I know we do have some print media with us as well, and I know editorially getting all the names very, very important just so for clarity as well. So I'm just going to run through the list, and of course, you know, our coaches will continue along those lines as well. So goalkeepers, Andre Blake, 
Shaquan Davis and Jamali Waite. Defenders, Richard King, Damian Lowe, Deshaun Bernard, Michael Hector, Dexter Lembekisa, Tavon Gray, and Greg Lee. Midfielders, Daniel Johnson, Joel Latibodere, Bobby De cordova reed Karoy Anderson, Casey Palmer, and Ronaldo Cifas. And the attackers, Corey Burke, Bailey Kadamatari, Demarai Gray, Shamar Nicholson, Mikel Antonio, Jamal Lowe, and Kahim Dixon. So that's the 23 selected for the upcoming games in the CONCACAF Nations League finals. Questions Amir has, please indicate with your hand and then we can continue and ask questions to coaches Halgrimson and coaches Gordon as well. All right, so we can open the floor for questions now. Yes, uh, Gregory Bryce. Yes, how much pressure do you think Michael Antonio now will have to take up in their, in their absence um, as one of the leading man? Well, you, you're absolutely correct with without Bailey, Nicholson and Demari, we, we are we are lacking uh, the attacking threat that we have had in the in the games leading up to this one. So it will be a um, a big task for those who step in the likes of Mikan Antonio to lead the attack. But uh, Evan Yes, Mr. E, yes, Rain Scorpion, 1983. There are persons that have not watched the press conference like Wicked Man Chris, and they've asked so that they can watch through it again because they're asking questions that Coach Halgripson answered yesterday. So I'm playing it for them because they didn't watch it yesterday. Look at the players. They will bring something new to the table, something exciting, and and it's just an opportunity. It's better to look at it as an opportunity rather than uh, than something to make up for. So, so, so I think some players will for sure be looking at the squad and say, "Now it's my turn to play. I'm gonna step into that sh into these shoes and do good." So I, I hope that the, the players will grab this opportunity they have in this huge game. You have a follow up, Bryce? Okay. Uh, speaking about opportunities, it, with the recent training that camp, um, a player like Kaim Dixon, um, how much pressure do you think he's under now to perform at such a young age in a, in a match like this? Yeah, it's a really good question. It's really important both for the supporters and him to understand that this is. Um, a chance he will get now uh, and we are not asking him to deliver the same as others this is a test for him a chance for him to grow as a, as a player and a person we think he has a bright future you know he's he's only 19 19 uh, and has not played a lot of um like let's, let's say grown-up football so it's more mostly schoolboy football is a similar situation like with um, with Whisper when we took him to the Gold Cup. He grabbed his opportunity, uh, did well for us. So it's just a chance. Uh, they, he will he knows like everybody else. He will have more more chances in the future if he plays his card correctly. But it, this is not do or die for him. This is an opportunity, and I hope he understands it. There's no pressure on that kid, uh, and it's also just to see how he, he interacts. Like Meron said, how he interacts with these players different kind of players and normally good players will step up and play better with be better players around them so i hope that will happen for kaim but the future is his and for sure uh, whether he, he he plays or whether he plays good or bad there will be more opportunities in the future for him you want to add something um just to add to, to what coach is saying um Taking Kaim in, into an environment like this is not to, 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 to pressure him as a footballer, but to, to build his character, build his professionalism, you know, because his next, his next life or his next level will be that. So it's not to bring him here to help us to get results, you know, but trust me, if you give him a chance, he will definitely deliver. But that's, that's not what we are thinking of. Um, just 
uh, as what coach said we did for whisper you know bring him in the environment bring my around professionals you know let him see the next level of football is what is most important for us thank you very much gregory i appreciate it any follow-up questions anybody else members of the media yes you can go ahead mr blake uh, good morning morning coach morning to the press officer simon morning coach gordon um ohili blake dre any weather sports um you can choose the answers you may but i want to ask the you explained clearly about some of the senior players who were not selected we accept that um i just want to ask about two players and your thoughts on them let's start with the easier one in the goalkeeping department for the third choice goalkeeper uh, we are seeing Amal Knight in being given a role. We are seeing Kemar Foster locally. Uh, you want to shed some light on the reasons behind the choice of um, Shaquan in this opportunity, and then a follow-up question after. Uh, I wish that our goalkeeper coach was here, so it's more his decision who he brings as goalkeeper coaches. But uh, for sure, Shaquan has done well once he has been with us. So, like I said, we, we took him in for trainings when we were here last camp against Canada, not as a squad member, but for the goalkeeper to look at him. He has been playing uh, well and trained well with, uh, with Mount Pleasant. Uh, I think, well, I'm not going to say what, what goalkeeper qualities our goalkeeper coach sees in him, but, but he thinks he is a, a, a goalkeeper that can step up even improve, improve more, uh, and we need more more goalkeepers to be playing at a higher level. So maybe a difference from Kemal Foster, who gives us a lot of experience. Uh, this one, Shaquan is younger, and we have uh, Amal Knight as well. So what are we looking for in our goalkeepers selection? Is is always we we have we have to look at them three and see what they give us. So. For sure, he is a future. I would say he is a future goalkeeper with a good guidance. He can be one of the best in the future. So I think that is the reason. Without and I'm putting words in my goalkeeper coach mouth. And the, the more difficult one um, would be. Uh, I know Simon attempted to go through the squad. Um, thanks for that. The Dujon Richards. He had been a young player who had been brought in the squad last year um, at the Gold Cup. And at that time, Coach Merriam, you were full of praises for the young man. He scored against Trinidad. And at the time, Coach Merriam, you had said that this was one for 2026 and beyond. So I'm seeking an answer as to his omission that he having been brought in to be developed for 2026 and beyond, and having not had a bad game for Jamaica, the, the reasons for his omission? Yeah, it's a good question, and, and clearly uh, it's good to, to have this question, just to clarify. He is now at Chelsea. Finally, he had a long, long time before he went to Chelsea, so he didn't play uh, a lot of matches. Even though we, we, we played him, he was not playing regular football at that time, but uh, he has some good coaching, and he was fit, but but apparently not much fit. Now he has played some under-19 games for Chelsea, and recently, I think, starting under last, last week or yeah. two weeks ago, he, he started to play for the under-21. Is starting to score there, so he's apparently he's growing in this environment, and we love that he went and took this big step. And it's always how big step is it? Can he can he grow? But at, at least you can see now he's starting to play for the under 21s at Chelsea. So apparently he is growing there, getting to know the environment. And it's not like we, we haven't, we have forgotten about Bowd Whisper by far, but he needs time to adjust and develop. And I, th I think if he continues like this, he, he will develop. So it, it's not going to be a long time until you see him back again, but let, let's give him time to, to, to grow and develop in his environment. And finally, Coach, what is the realistic expectation to the fans? Are we in this to win our first piece of silverware? That's the final question. Good question. Of course, of course. When you are in a final four in any tournament, you, of course, aim are aiming to win. 
So that's always when you go into you go into every game to win it, and especially when you only need two good performances to win a, 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 a title. So, but if you're asking about percentage, how much percentage, or you know, if you want to bet on it, I, I can't give you the 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 odds on it. But for sure, if you look at the squad, you know, US has players playing at a higher level than us. Uh, so maybe on paper, US is more likely. But you know, this game, this wonderful game, uh, is not always how it looks on paper. Uh, the, the result doesn't always reflect on how it looks on paper. So I think we have we are growing. If we have grown this much, we would just see uh, on the twenty first. Thank you very much, Mr. Blake. Really appreciate it. We have another question. Here at the back, right? Go ahead. Um, coach, uh, question about a player that we have, the fans have been asking about for a long while now, um, Omar Hutchinson. Um, question is, um, did he receive a call up and or what's the latest update on Omar Hutchinson? Seems we haven't seen him now in a long while. Now, uh, again, a player that we are monitoring, we are in contact with. So, a good question. I know the fans uh, have been as uh, asking about him. Um, so we we had or I I am in contact with the family. They said, um, as you remember, we are, we're not hiding anything. They said that he wanted time before he wanted to come back to to national team because he is and this this time he said uh, he wants to focus on the promotion fight and after that he will he will take the the step uh, for for the national team. But he's really now focused on. Getting the promotion for Ipswich, he wants to purely focus on that, uh, and it's he, he feels like it's enough for him at the moment, as as a as a player to 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 be doing that one thing at this time. So we respect that, but we are we are monitoring that player, are in good contact with them. So there's nothing uh, unusual about this. He is just focusing on his career uh, at Ipswich, and yeah, that is his free choice. Of course, but when he starts to play, things. But I really don't remember. Normally, I, I have him. He is my, <laughs> he's my portable drive. So <laughs> my gigabytes are, are kept with him and him. Uh, I want to think. What one of the most important thing we we spoke about as a group was that we need two goals at least. <laughs> you know, so even if Canada scored scored first, we're gonna need two goals. So yeah, that was the main thing. Um, from a tactical point of view, we know it was going to be a tough night for us. Um, we had some bad history on that pitch. We know that we have to fight against history and fight against weather and everything. So it was just a mindset thing for us, I think. All right. Thank you very much, Mario. Appreciate it. Do we have any more further questions? Yeah, good morning. Um, how important was that match, that Canada match? How important is this now in the scheme of things? Heading into this match, how, how you perform, how you actually came out of that match in that tough environment. How important is it now heading into this match? How are you gonna use that as any form of platform or whatever? Um, so it's, a, it's a good question. I think you know, a Canada environment, you know, kind of show the new us um, where we will we are willing to go anywhere and fight. Um, especially, you know, um, the the plans that we had as a, as a technical staff as we presented to the players was that, you know, in order to, to, to have competitive games for all the windows coming forward, you know, we need to win that game um, to, 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 to go to Nation League um, semifinals. And I think, you know, that pushed us, you know, all the players, were, you know, were fighting for, for at no point in the game, you saw like we we're gonna give up, you know. We, I know a lot of people stopped watching the game after Canada scored first. But we had that belief, we had that no, that will to say that we're gonna we're gonna push we're gonna push through, and I think that will and that know-how and that fight we're gonna you know just push over into the into into the U.S. game. Can I, can I add to this, I, I think psychologically it's it's important uh, knowing that we can do things like this going into this game against U.S. Um, Maybe our, our, the, the odds are not in our favor, but we still know what we did there. So psychologically, it gives us strength and, and growing as a team, it, it gives us strength. Again, financially as well for the Federation who have won this game to secure this uh, semi-final and final, huge games. Uh, and then we secured 
uh, our spot in the Copa America. So again, financially really important for the federation. So we can grow as a unit, uh, we can grow as a federation, uh, doing more things uh, for the for the um, senior teams, both men's and the women's. So it, it it makes it easier financially as well. Yeah, one more. Um, Coach, I don't want to tear away, but there's a perception that there's a perception that in your mind already as a staff, um, most local players won't, won't, won't get a look in at the crunch time. Um, you spoke about some players taking their chances in Trinidad. And you also spoke earlier about there will still be an eye on the local situation where Coach Meron will make possible to supervise and oversee. Uh, what can you tell us about that in terms of, um, you know, are you still still will, will, will you be having a stern eye still out for the local talent when the crunch time comes around for, for the big ones yeah i kind of answered that before uh this so so we we will continue to do that i think we have we have spent a lot of time now recent two months uh for me it it, it really doesn't matter where the talent comes we just want to select the best talents um I said in my meetings with the with the guys in the parishes or the people in the parishes that I, I I probably am not as sentimental as many of Jamaicans. Um, it, it's pretty basic. If there's a good player here in Jamaica, he's sold, and the te the, the clubs will sell a player when it off when an offer comes, more or less. They even send them in season on loan for the chance to to sell a player. So we often talked about, you know, a player, if he's good, he's sold normally to a USL club in, in US. Uh, and if a player in, in USL is good, where does he go? He goes to the MLS. And if a player is good in the MLS, where does he go? He goes to the top clubs in Europe. So if we have already a lot of players in the top clubs in Europe, it kind of for me makes sense that we should start to look there and find the players there. Of course, there will always be exceptions. For me, it's it's just logic. It's just logic. But we have our eyes on the players here. We have been selecting players from here. Also, if we do that, these players will probably take the next step. They will get more exposure, etc. I think, though, the first national team should not be that platform. It should be an under-23 national team where these players can, can play on a regular basis. I get what you, you're asking, but I kind of answer this question in, in the opening statement. Yeah, because as I said, the, the perception, no matter what, there will be that perception that at the end of the day, irrespective of what you say. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we, we can change. City, yeah, I, I don't think we can change the perception of people. Uh, so if, if people want more uh, domestic players playing in the JPL or in the schoolboy football to play for the first national team, you know that's their that's their opinion i just i just express what i feel and i think and how i see things and i like to be honest and if people don't agree with me then of course they have the right to criticize our selection yeah, thank you thank you very much really appreciate it there guys really appreciate the the questions for coaches halgrimson and gordon thank you for being here as well everybody we appreciate it for those individuals that will be heading to dallas safe journey to those all right and you know, you know where exactly you can get more information following the national team, JFF Football on Twitter, Instagram, and also YouTube as well for the latest updates. So thank you very much for being here, guys. Be safe on the road, and we will certainly be in touch. Have a pleasant day.
This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by... Starboy's Juices, infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing, nutritious, and delicious. There are numerous flavors to choose from. There is strawberry sea moss, peanut hard on, beet and thing, pineapple sea moss, mango sea moss, pineapple ginger, ginger root, cucumber ginger, and so much more. Call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Call now and you won't be disappointed. If you think the juices were good, then try Starboys Jello, full of flavor and sumptuous. Again, call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. Three four five four. That's one two six seven nine zero four three four five four. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports: football, cricket, athletics netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sports City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sports City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sports City right now.